Hi, I'm Brad Johnson, and I'm here to show you some of the new features in our asset operations application as of 2019. For an overview of Bayfield and all the classic applications and an introduction to the system, please feel free to visit our other YouTube videos, as you can see here. What we've tried to do with asset operations in the past year is try to incorporate more workflow uh, in your day-to-day -day, uh, monitoring. So asset operations can be found in our monitoring module here on the left-hand side. When we load it up, basically it will show all the assets in my fleet. So it will show turbines, inverters, met mass, et cetera. You can then filter by the operational state of these assets. So right now we're just looking at what assets are stopped in my fleet. But if I, I want to check out all of them, I just click all here and it's going to expand my search to not just the turbines that are stopped, but all my inverters that might be running, all the turbines that might be in low winds, any substation that might be stopped. So it's a completely generic asset monitoring application. Again, it's embedded with our filter here, so you can pick and choose what sites you want to look at, what asset models you want to look at, et cetera. So if I just want to look at, for example, one wind site, I just hit apply here, and it's just going to show me now the wind sites, no more inverters. So this allows you to drill down and monitor only what you want to monitor. In addition to just monitoring the turbines, we now have an option to monitor the entire site or the sites. So now each site is its own line item, and you can drill in and monitor each machine independently. You can get the site production and the site KPIs up here at the top. So you can see here now a drill down of all the turbines. Same concept for solar and inverters. If I go back into the assets page here, I'm going to show you a few new workflow features we offer in the product. So over the past year, we've done a lot of uh, development in terms of actually controlling your wind farm or your solar plant if you need to. So you can see there's uh, some new, I'm going to hide my filter here just for a second. There's some new links here to do control and advanced control. So to do simple stop and start control, we have a simple UI where you can do that. When you do that, we have second level password authentication and protection so you don't accidentally shut down your, your turbine or your site. For, ter for customers that are looking to do control, we re generally recommend that you host Basefield in your own on-premise uh, network so you can control all the cybersecurity aspects of this as well. You can do control both on a single machine or you can do it on multiple machines at once and just hit control assets there. And now every machine that I've selected, I can do as a bulk or individually. In addition to just start and stop, some OEMs and some SCADA systems allow uh, Basefield and other products to do more than just start and stop. So any other command that a SCADA allows us to do, you can be found in advanced control Basically, each one of these widgets represents a distinct command that we can write to the SCADA system. And the SCADA system can then take the action to shut down the machine. So for example, we're looking at uh, run, stop. Perhaps your SCADA system allows you to derate the turbine. If you don't know what your SCADA system allows you to do, we can figure that out for you if you just give us a little bit of documentation. And we can tell you whether this applies to you or not. These are all configurable too. So you can add the trends that you want to see in this control widget. Uh, you can point it at another tag, uh, you can sort it, you can display uh, different values in it. Completely flexible way to do your command and control. And we can do that both on an asset level and we can also do advanced control on a site level. So if you have a substation out there for your inverters or your turbines, you need to do voltage control, you need to send commands to, to curtail the plant during negative pricing perhaps. Uh, the same widgets and the same, uh, the same idea applies for the site. We just allow uh, the users to enter in their SCADA inputs as control commands to uh, Basefield, and then each control command will show up as a widget, which you can configure yourselves and use to shut down the plant or turn on the plant or curtail the plant or regulate voltage or whatever you need to do. Okay, now we're back in the asset view, and I'm going to show you our new task management feature that's been released this year in Basefield. So, we try to incorporate more workflow into this monitoring system now. Often when turbines or inverters are down, you might want to send somebody to do something about it, or you might need to set up a meeting, or you need to take action on it, right? And now in Basewheel, we allow you to track those actions and add those actions. So for example, let's say I'm looking at a site, and I'm looking at all the machines that are stopped right now. So this one's been stopped for two days. It has my root cause alarm uh, here. Let's say I want to send an engineer or set up a meeting uh, with the OEM to talk about and troubleshoot this machine. What I can do now is just click Add Task to this, and it will pop up a new user interface. This allows me to enter in key information about what I want this task to be. So for example, I'm going to pop up my keyboard here, and I'm just going to say I want to set a meeting uh, 
maybe this is a, a, a troubleshooting issue about the converter. I'm going to say troubleshoot. Converter. I'm going to assign it to a certain user in the system. I'll just assign it to the generic base user. This user should have their email already in the system. I'm going to give it a status. It's a new task, so I'm just going to say new. I'll give it a due date of this Friday, and I'll give it a critical priority. When I'm done, I just hit save. That will create a, a few new links up here. So once I've saved the task, now it gives me the option to add a document. A document could be any document related to this task. I could click new and upload it from my local machine. Or if I've already uploaded a previous document already into Basefield, I can just attach it to this task. So let's say I have my converter manual. This is a converter related downtime. So I'm just going to attach that. So whoever I've assigned this task can now have uh, reference this manual or this troubleshooting steps that they might need for that alarm or that machine. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now that's created a task in your operations management uh, uh, monitoring platform. That user who's been assigned the task will get an email saying, hey, you have a new task in Basefield. Here's its due date. Here's who assigned it to you. When they want to make changes to that task, they can just navigate to their um, operations module here into operations management. This will show a complete uh, log of all the tasks that have been added to the system. You can use the filter again to drill in to what site that these tasks are associated with or even down to the asset, the inverter, the turbine that they're associated with. If the user needs to edit these tasks by any, for any reason, if they need to set them as complete, if they're complete, or if they just need to edit the status, they can just click edit, and now they have this screen and they can and do their changes. So this task management can be done in both real time from asset operations, or it could be done from uh, our availability application. So our availability application will track all your historical events, not just the real-time events. So maybe a machine went down last week and it's up again, but you still want to uh, set in motion some type of troubleshooting task or meeting task. So I can go into any of my historical events I've had. So right now I'm looking at a, a certain site uh, for the past week. Um, maybe I want to find, uh, find this 40-day outage. This was a pretty big outage. Maybe I have a task associated with that. I can just click Add Task now on this allocation and have the same UI pop up even if it was in the past. Now, the cool thing about this now too is the machine and base field is learning from your behavior. So let's say for an example, you attach a task uh, today on a certain alarm or a certain machine. That task will show up as a suggested task in the future if that same alarm pops up. So this will allow you to better automate and better suggest actions uh, for you to troubleshoot machines. Now that we're on the availability application, I want to show you some of our new features we've developed in the past year for that. Think of our availability application as a personal finance uh, budget tracking platform. So if you track your budgets uh, and your finances on a monthly basis, you might use a platform like Mint.com or any other web-based platform, Quicken. And that will import uh, your data from your credit card and you want to track how much money you spend for different reasons, right? Our availability and event management is the same thing, but it's for your wind or your solar farm. So every line item here is essentially an expense. It's an event where the machine is underperforming or when the machine is down. And we tell you what the alarm was and what the classification was. So this is kind of the exact expense that you paid and this is the classification of that expense to make a, another comparison to a personal finance uh, tool. So again, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the availability tool, we have a complete demo of this in our YouTube page. But just to show you a, a brief, the brief premise of it, uh, you're allowed to change these. So if the base field system, for whatever reason, didn't uh, get the correct classification on your outage, you can just hit override and edit and change the classification of this outage, right? So you can do this with as many different classification systems as you want to. Uh, for wind and, and solar, we use GADs and IEC conventions to map all the OEMs and all the types of inverters to one uniform standard. And you can navigate between the different uh, classification systems here. So typically, you want to uh, uh, classify your downtime to a GADs convention, to an IEC convention, and maybe a contractual convention that maybe the OEM, specifically for wind like Vestas or Axiona, will, will give you. So you can navigate through them here. One of the new features now, though, is we allow you to not just categorize simultaneously with one classification, but we allow you to link your classification types and edit them all at once. So you're going to be looking at fundamentally the same thing, the same outages, but now you can see we have multi-tiered classification systems. 
And we made the editing process a little bit easier. So if you just want to edit any uh, aspect of this, you just click the arrow here, and now you just change classifications. So I'm going to cancel that. But it shows you we've just tried to simplify the process of you editing your downtime. We even have allowed now uh, subcategories. So you can provide a master level category for the outage and also a sub level category and configure them actually in our administration menu. Beyond now linking allocations, we offer another feature which we call bulk events. A bulk event is any event which affects a large amount of assets. So think of it as perhaps a curtailment, perhaps some type of planned transmission outage, or maybe just a gopher chewing at your feeder lines, which takes down a string of turbines or inverters, right? I'm gonna navigate from the allocation menu uh, to our timeline menu. This allows you to look at all your allocations in a more visual fashion. So right now we're just focusing on a string of machines and we're focusing on about a week of data. And I can zoom in or, or navigate here. So I'm looking at time on the x-axis here and I'm looking at all the machines in my certain string here. So you can see we have some low wind periods. We have some, an outage of a single machine. Um, but as we keep going, we see this event here. So this affected all the machines. This is some type of uh, curtailment based on the color scheme that we've set up. So we might want to provide some more metadata and track some more metadata or reclassify this entire period because of this event. So I'm just going to click Add Bulk Event. And this pulls down a new menu here. And let's say I want the event time to be uh, about the time of this allocation. So I click that. And now it populates the start and the end time of this bulk event. Of course, I can change this and fine tune this if I have better information from the SCADA system. I can assign a, a type to this. So if this was an economic curtailment, I can provide that as a type. And these types can be flexible. You can fig configure your own types, just like your allocation categories. Now, if you also want to reallocate every single machine, um, their individual allocation categories, you just click Change Category here. And now I can pick whatever classification I want uh, from each of my linked classification systems. So I'm just going to choose a, a few here. I'm going to call this an out of management control forced. Uh, I'm going to call this, uh, it's a curtailment. So maybe it's an external stop. And uh, I'll just give it a general. And I'll say turbine unavailable. So these would be whatever linked uh, allocations you have. I can give a brief description, you know, uh, planned, uh, plans, curtailments. on, let's say this was, I think, November 17th. Just give a little brief description. Now that I'm done uh, creating my event, I just hit Add. It will give you a little warning because you're about to change and add metadata to this entire string of assets. So we just give you a warning beforehand. Click OK. This creates the bulk event. And now as this uh, system reloads here, when I scroll back to that time, you can see that all of these have been given a little pin icon and they've been manually overridden to reflect that you have added and changed uh, all the turbine allocations to that uh, bulk event. So here you go. Now it's OMC Force because I'm looking at the GADS convention, and that's how we do bulk event editing. Every bulk event that you save is also uh, listed out for you in the Events tab. So you can always just quickly visualize these. These are physically stored in our SQL Server too, so they can be used in any base field report, any BI report, uh, for you to ingest as a as an asset manager. Thank you for joining us here at Wea Wind Power 2019 to hear about some of our new features. We have about a million other things we can show you. So if you're more interested in the product, just go to our website to www.basefield.com, click sign up for a demo, and either myself or one of my colleagues will join you for a WebEx and give you a complete product overview with everything that we have to offer. You can also visit all our other YouTube videos that we have, which go deep into all our applications. So thank you very much. Have a good day.